Hello everyone, this is Brian, and today I'm going to show you how to make an analog clock. So you can see I've already done some work. I've made a model of the analog clock, which includes this backing, which is this brown piece. Um, the front, which is this white piece, just for aesthetics. And then the critical, the critical components, which are the center, minute hand, and the hour hand. So um, let's get started. So first, make a script as always. Okay, we've given in the name. So the first thing we're going to, of course, need um, for a clock is the time, and we need to get that from the lighting service. Over here, we're going to need this clock time. So, by the way, this, um, this clock will work best if you have a day and night cycle script, which I show how to do in my previous video. I also have this other stuff that's secret for later. But anyway, um, that's you can just copy and paste that or whatever. Um, but we need the lighting service for this too, so... Um, light equals um, game get service lighting. Okay, so um, first um, we're going to need to get some stuff inside of the clock. So first we're going to get the model, which it would be the script's parent since it's in the model. Um, then we're going to need the big hand and the little hand, well, the, the hour hand and the minute hand. So um, hour hand will equal, and then since our hand is two words. We can't just say like model dot our hand because as you can see it has a space here um, and we can't put a space there or it'll error. So to uh, get the address for something that has a space in its name you uh, make an opening bracket like that and then you type it in as a string. So our okay and then the minute hand. The final thing is we're going to need is the position of that center which is the center of the clock in there. So we're going to need to get its position as our final thing here. So model.center.position. Now we're going to make uh, four functions. So first function we're going to call rotate axis, and it's going to take which hand it's rotating and the angle that I will be rotating it to. Then we're going to need um, a function called get our angle. So get the angle of the hour, which I'll explain in a moment. And the same thing for the minute get. Finally, we're going to need a function to run everything um, continuously. So we're going to make a while loop and make sure to put this wait in there and then make sure to execute that run function. So in order to get what angle an hour would be, we need to think about angles. So there are 12 hours that make up the full circle of the clock, and there are 360 degrees which make the full circle of a circle. So we need to multiply that 12 by something to get 360. Well, what's the op opposite of multiplication? Division. So we're going to divide 360 by 12, and that will give us 30. So if we multiply 30 times 12, that will give us 360, and as well as everything in between. So that will give us um, our hour's angle. But there's one, one caveat to that, and it, that's um, how clocks generally start at the top. They start at 12. That would be their 360 degrees. Angles start on the right. So what we're going to need to do is we're just going to need to subtract everything by 90 degrees to kind of rotate or flip everything to be in the right orientation. So in code that would look like this. So local hour equals light dot clock time. And then we're going to return the angle. Um, we're going to return math.rad of the angle. The functions that we're going to be using later require radians, which is just a different um, way to measure angles. But we're not going to worry about that, so we're just going to use this function to convert um, our degrees into radians. So um, what we were saying earlier, we need to multiply the hour by 30 to convert it into degrees. So hour times 30. And then we're going to need to add um, those, um, or no, subtract those 90 degrees um, in order to get the orientation proper. So it's a similar thing for the minutes, except um, what we're going to have to do is um, the full circle is um, 60 minutes. So we're going to need to divide 360 by 60, which I believe is 6, in order to get that properly. So... There are 12 hours in a full circle and 60 minutes in a full circle. We're doing essentially the same thing. So um, first, let me get the hour again. 
update.clock time. And now, how do we get the minutes? That's the thing. So, the hour will give us the minutes. This won't be just a whole integer value. It will have decimal places, and those decimal places will be the minute. We need to just isolate those decimal places in order to get what minute it is currently. So how do we do that? There's a function called math.floor, and what that basically does is it rounds everything down to the nearest integer. Um, math.seal does the opposite. It'll round it up, regardless of what the integer is. Um, so essentially, it's taking away the decimal places and just giving the integer number of whatever is there. So if we take the hour and we subtract the math.floor hour, we have the hour with the decimal places subtracted by the hour without the decimal places, which will just give you the decimal places. So the other thing we have to keep in, um, take into account is there are 60 minutes in an hour. So we're going to need to multiply that by 60 since we're still in terms of hours. So now we have the current minute. So now we're going to essentially do the same thing that we did with the hour. So return math.rad uh, min, not hour, um, times 6, I believe that's what it was, and then minus the 90. So essentially the same thing, just multiplied by 6 since... Um, now that we have that, now we worry about this rotate axis. Now th this stuff isn't right, but I'm going to troubleshoot it later so you can understand it better. So. For rotate axis, we're going to need um, the length of the hands. That's the first function we're going to get. I'm going to call it half hand. Okay, so make sure that when you're building the clock, that when you go to size it, you size it along the y-axis so that the length of both of the hands are along the y-axis. So this isn't um, resized on a different axis. I just... Um, I resized this to be smaller, and then I copied it and rotated it. So even if you go to the hour hand, you'll see that it's still sized lengthways on the y-axis. So just make sure that they're both sized along that axis. So um, hand.size.y, and we're going to need the half of that. And I'll explain that in a moment, but let me type this all out and then explain it. So the other things we're going to need is we're going to need to get the position. So it's going to be revolving around the center, so we're going to have the center dot y, and then we're going to do some trigonometry to figure out um, where the point it's revolving around is. So we're going to need to use that half hand variable, and then we're going to multiply that by math dot sine of the angle. That's the function I was talking about that needed to take radians. Um, we're going to be doing the same thing for x. It's not actually x, but again, I'm going to help you troubleshoot this. So that will be center.x plus half hand times math dot cosine of angle. So we're, we know that we're revolving around that center point of the clock, so we're setting the position to be that, and then plus a certain amount. So what is this half hand times math dot sine and half hand times math dot cosine? Well, hello everyone, this is Brian in the future. And I'm just going to explain sine and cosine a little bit better. So here we have visualization. And what I want you to do is imagine that this circle is on a grid right now, okay? And that the point in question we're talking about is at the end of that needle. If the center of the circle is, say, 0, 0 on the grid, where would the end of that needle be? Well, it's level with that, so the y would be 0 and the x would be 1. Now look at sine and cosine. What are they? sine is 0 and cosine is 1. So that's a pretty easy thing to figure out, the point directly to the right of the center. But what if I asked you what would the x and y coordinates be at 30 degrees? You don't know, but that's why we have sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are like a way for us to translate angles into rectangular coordinates, which is exactly what we want for this clock. To improve this example, let's just say, let's move, the, uh, let's move the angle to 45. Now, a 45 degree angle is right between 0 and 90, so x and y are going to be identical. And as you can see, they're both identical. They're 0.707. And as we move it up to 90, you can see that cosine is now 0 and sine is 1. So we now know that sine and cosine are doing exactly what we want them to do. Finally, one last thing to note 
is that sine and cosine only go a certain distance. They point in the correct direction, but the length of their arc is only going to be one. So in order to get the coordinates of something that's farther away than one unit, you have to multiply the x and the y by whatever distance you need. And that's why we're multiplying sine and cosine by half hand. So finally, to actually do something with this, we're going to say that the hand C frame is going to equal C frame new vector 3 dot new. So, um, the reason we're using C frame is because if you set something's position, um, it's going to want to interact with objects, whether can collide is on or off. So it's going to collide with things and not do exactly what we want it to do, which is silly, but you know, whatever. Um, but C frame doesn't do that. If you tell it to be somewhere, it will be there no matter what. So C frame dot new, and then we're going to get um, a position. So we can just put a vector inside of the constructor and we'll already know how to convert that into a C frame. So um, we know that the position will be x, y, and then whatever the current z is. So we want it to revolve around the clock, but we don't want it to go like in and out of the clock. We just want it to stay the same on that axis. So um, we're going to say hands.position.z. And then we're going to multiply this by the C frame angle that we want. So C frame angles, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I believe. I'm supposed to do it here. So um, we're just going to put the angle in here, and that will um, be rotating the hand. So let's um, let's do this with the minute hand, since it'll be moving faster, and it'll be easier to see what's going on. So we're going to say rotate axis with that function, and then we're going to say um, min hand, and then the angle will be get minute angle. Now remember, I said this isn't going to work, so there's going to be something weird that'll happen. Oopsie whoopsie. Oh, I, I didn't put this closing parentheses. Haha, <laughs> programming. Okay, so you can see it's um it's not not quite you see how it's kinda just turning into the clock, like we can see inside the clock tower. So remember how I said um the X was going to be wrong? Yeah, well the X is going to be rotating it along this axis and not the one that we want on this axis. So that's what I was saying about troubleshooting it. So in case you have this problem, I can show you how to fix it. So all we have to do is we have to change this to Z, change this to Z. We have to put Z in the Z position, and then it's hand position dot X. I know this is weird. And um, let's try that. So now you can see that it's um, revolving around the clock at the right axis, but that angle that I set it to um, is also on the wrong axis. It's turning into the clock instead of around the clock. So I'm going to just move the angle to the X, um, so it'll be revolving the correct way. So now you can see it's revolving the correct way, but there are a few problems, and this is what I was saying about how it's wrong. So sometimes things in games don't work out well. All your math can be right, but there's just some um, conversion you have to make with your angles. So there are uh, uh, quite a few problems, but one of the problems is this is going counterclockwise, and uh, we're making a clock, so that's not what we want. So to convert this to make sure that it's going clockwise instead of counterclockwise, we're going to have to go into our um, get hour and get minute angle um, functions again. And to make an angle um, turn the opposite way but be, still be the same angle, what you do is you take 360 and you subtract um, the angle that you're getting from that. So as the angle increases, it's actually subtracting from 360 and turning backwards, which is what we want. That will be clockwise in terms of clocks instead of degrees, how it goes in a circle um, counterclockwise. Um, we're going to be doing the same thing for hour here because it has the same issue. And we're going to try that now. So you can see now that its position is getting set um, correctly, but um, this isn't rotating right. It's actually rotating backwards. So we're going to have to fix something in our angle calculation, and it's kind of just doing the opposite of what we were doing before. So we're going to subtract this by 360. But remember, we're in radians right now. So we just have to convert um, our degrees here, math.rad, into radians. So now when we test it, there's 
one more problem. You see, it's rotating the correct way. It's going the right way around the clock, but it's just 90 degrees off from where it should be. So that's the final thing we have to do. It's kind of similar how we subtracted 90 here. We just have to encapsulate these in parentheses and then um, subtract um, 90 from there. So now when we go into here, we can see that it's um, going around the clock properly. So let's um, test the hour and then make sure that um, time's all aligned. So you can see, um, actually what we're going to do to make sure that this is working properly is we're going to set the lighting to be 12 o'clock, that's moody, um, just so that we know at 12 o'clock both of the hands are pointing up so we can know if the hands are pointing the correct way. And then we're going to examine where the minute hand is. So we know when the minute hand gets to here that it'll be 15 minutes. So let me go over here into lighting and check and make sure that 15 minutes are aligned. So when it hits my mouse, it should be about 15 minutes. And it is. So that all works properly. And um, we're just going to wait a while here, and this hour should be, you know, around here once the um, hand makes its way around. So let's just wait. It's about pointing where one should be, so that's um, correct. So that is how you make an analog clock in Roblox. Um, thank you for watching. In the next video, I'm going to be showing how to make a digital clock, which is a lot less trigonometry if that's um, uh, not your thing. So uh, I hope you learned something from this video. I know it's a lot of information, but it's I. It will be a value to you. It it's worth. This stuff is worth learning. So um, thank you for watching. See you next time.